Here we are. Every morning and night and middle of the day, every two hours, every hour, I've been checking to see if the Dark Horse is shipped and uh, last night it shipped at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So if the truck driver, I hope, drives straight here, <laughs> be here any minute. So now that it's actually officially inbound, we actually have two. We have one for Cruise for a Cause, which is a charity that we work with. Um, so that's gonna be here. And then the white one's actually mine. So um, I got that thing loaded up with a track pack, um, Recaro seats, all that kind of stuff. As you can see, I'm pretty excited. I got it up on my uh, my, my window sticker. So, um, but yeah, now it's just like going through my head, like, okay, got to get the car, just like the S650. If you've seen our dyno video, we got to get the. I'm trying to like map in my head. Okay, when it shows up, get the first things first. Get the the, the break in miles. Then we got to get it on the dyno, and then we have a whole group of guys going to the drag strip tonight. So if the whole move, everything aligns, we get the car in an amount of time that we can go do this stuff. There's a lot of good content coming. So we're just jacked. We got to get this, uh, got to get this car here. So the cool thing is with the video, it's like all of a sudden, like you're watching a five minute video. I'm going to be waiting for maybe hours. You're going to wait for minutes and boom, it's going to be there. <laughs> but yeah, we're excited for it. It's been a, been a long time coming and, uh, we're gonna kind of film the kind of how everything, like what we're doing today to get ready for the dark horse. So make sure you stay tuned and see how, uh, see how this day goes. Whenever they come and drop off cars, they come in and right there. They come from the off ramp over here. You know what's crazy is when my 500 came, I had a, I was looking at the interstate cams literally all day when I knew it was picked up to see if I could see a grabber line 500 on the bed of a truck coming up from, from the Chicago area. Did you ever see it? Uh, no. <laughs> I did see it once all of a sudden it showed up. That was in December and it was cold. That's the worst when it shows up in December. It's like middle, there's salt everywhere. You can't really enjoy it. I still drove it because I had to, but you know, it's not ideal for the car and the salt. But. 50 degrees in the morning now here as we come into the fall season. I imagine it makes a lot more boost, so pretty exciting. Some of the things you haven't seen on the channel yet, yes, we work on everything, so this is a pretty cool build that we've been working on. This is another uh, thing we got going here. Uh, doing a motor swap on this. Um, Previous tune had way too much timing in it in this cold Wisconsin air and uh, the engine didn't like that. So they brought it to us. We're gonna rebuild it, retune it. We're gonna do a flex fuel tune on it, make sure it runs better um, in all conditions and stuff and get a little more manageable for, uh, for reliability, so. I don't know if you guys have seen our new fan cart yet. Check this out, 8.8 .8 amps a piece. We got two more too, but this really helps the airflow on the dyno. And uh, every one of these Middleton Motorsports patches gives us like 50 more uh, CFM of airflow. You can look it up on YouTube. Um, it, it's real. Woo! When it gets hot out, I just come over here and just... Like air conditioning. Woo! You guys ever seen a Terralingua racing team Shelby built uh, Mustang? Check this thing out. <laughs> Custom built, serialized car, supercharged. Let me know if you've seen it. I've been in Mustang world for a while and I was not aware of this car, but it's a pretty cool logo. See that on the front? Something I didn't know existed. Got like the full on racing, like the racing brake coolers. Pretty sweet setup. I think I've paced around this dealership 15 times today, just looking for the, looking for the dark horse. You guys want to see this on the dyno? 73 Mach 1. Ooh. That might make some, make some noise. I'm not sure how much power, but kind of fun. Or should I take my moped down the interstate and just look for the truck and then like, Maybe it'll get here faster. Oh. Well, after uh, 400,000 hours of waiting on the corner of the dealership lot, it's here. 
think the white really looks good. I didn't do the blue brakes. I don't know if I'd want to do that or not, but. What comes in here, you got your uh, splitter as your passenger. Nice thing is, is they gave us a ton of gas. Zero miles to empty in here. Now it's official. It makes all the power. Honestly, it looks really close to what the, the other Mustang looked like, with, with exception of the strut tower brace that says the dark horse on it. Other than that, it's really good. The shot, fun wrapping. It's a good sound. That's the the fox body gauges. I got the gurney flap and stuff too. We can put. Matt, should we just put this on a hoist? Yeah, do you want to put it on that hoist where your car is? Yeah. Use uh. You just don't want to crack. You might you could crack the flap if you went too far. That's just like for the flap. It's kind of different. It's a different type of plastic yeah, too. Yeah, no, they use like a poly. Up. A poly yeah. yeah. Oh, where it's like you get your car. And you want to... Oh, uh, catches rocks. No different than any other one, right? From where? <laughs> Look at that. They're both the same size, right? It should be. Uh... Kind of a crazy. I kind of like it's definitely gonna hold it in. So yeah, you're supposed to put this. Hmm. So then this goes back up. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Empty all the uh, Michigan rocks out of it. Yep. Well, it's actually. I mean, what did they do? It's probably just like a gravel parking lot. But it's like they drove it in like the rain. Like the monsoon. Yeah. The great floods. Maybe it was down in Florida. I mean, the first time we drive it across any road. Do you think, think this is for anything? That's the custom. This is the. <laughs> Look at that. It's just literally a rubber band. Um, I think that's supposed to come off in uh, delivery. It's probably like an assembly line thing where they hang. They probably got rubber bands hanging. <laughs> yeah. The harnesses. From Gone. Something. We don't need that. Good. So this dealio. Um, Wait, no, it's back Oh, here. it goes the other one. up on top of that, oh. yeah. Over that. I suffer from short-term memory loss. Oh, nothing. Sixteen screws. Lower splitter. Push pins. I don't know what goes out here. That's all right. Put the, all the front stuff on, the splitters, wickers, side pieces. Um, ordered the stickers right away because we're going to throw on the dyno after this. We guys literally spent the last few hours driving around, getting as many miles as I can on it. So now we're getting the stickers. So we had a lot of people uh, trying to steal pictures and stuff of our last video. So it's hard to steal uh, <laughs> to edit over our stuff here now. So looks pretty good too, though.
behind the scenes of Instagram. <laughs> this is how I, uh, I'm usually the one running around like doing the videos and trying to be in the videos, but make sure I do stuff on Instagram, you know. So make sure you look at our Instagram stuff. It's all me. It's all me. I am the Instagram. When you message us, it's you messaging me. We didn't anticipate to run it again, so we didn't have the dyno plug pulled in there, but I mean, the thing's strapped to the dyno. We figured we'd do another run. We're already we're editing the other video right now, but might as well just see if we can make some more power like out of the blue, right? a really good tone like right in front of the engine you can hear those intakes it's a really unique sound morning one waking up with a dark horse so I was able to drive it around and do some kind of initial re reactions to it the I think the biggest like the screen is obviously like the kind of the biggest like update I would say like just the overall change on the inside um, I spent most of my night <laughs> responding to comments on our uh, dyno video because everybody was uh, had so many questions about this, that, and the other thing. So you unlock this car, it has like a really cool sequence where it has all the different lights and changing stuff. So it's one thing I noticed after my kids were going crazy when they saw it when I brought it home last night. They're like, oh, look at the lights! But it's a pretty cool feature on it. Here's how these would hold on because we put these on with like there's like that double side tape earlier in the video where we put those on. We we're just curious if those are gonna stay. Seems to be doing all right. These wheels, I mean, the wheels in the front end are kind of like RTR esque. I don't know what you guys think, but kind of think there was definitely some inspiration from RTR with this car. See, I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even taken off all the sticker residue. But. Yeah, I mean, that overall, I, I think one thing we're going to do, see how it has like the, I mean, the nice, these nice uh, stickers. I think we're going to do a black, like a matte black roof. I think that'll really kind of make this car look really nice. So I'm going to see if the, the wrap guys can do that quick for us. I think that'll change the whole look of the car. I think it'll literally, every time we've done the black wrap on the car, it makes it look lower. And I think that this will look awesome, especially with like the black. There we got the spoiler. We'll tie it all in. But yeah, we did. It's like the brakes on this. I chose to do the black, black and white because it's kind of you can do the blue option. We get the blue brakes. It's like a five hundred dollar option for the paint. And someone like me that's gonna track it all the time, you end up just getting a bunch of brake dust on it anyway. So this, I think, with the way the car black and white looks, I'm pretty happy with it. But let's go do a little more driving and talk about it and. Go from there. One of the first things I do when I get in this car is turn the mode to sport mode. It makes the throttle response a lot better, stiffens it up, and gives us a little more exhaust sound. That or track mode, depending on what type of driving I want to do. But yeah, I mean, over like this car is just like it's solid. The way it drives is honestly, it's like a it's like a smoother, more darty. 350 I would say it's just like it's not like jaw jack like the 500 is a little like more rough and stuff you got the 20 inch wheels this has 19s it, it, it definitely has a, a really nice feel to this car more more it's a better feel than I you know initially anticipated 
I wasn't sure where this was going to fall into the line. I personally, from driving the 350, I, I owned one, I drove it, I tracked it and all that stuff. The initial impressions are the low end torque is something that it is, I think, a lot of the times overlooked. Everybody gets all caught up in the 350 sound, and yes, the 350 sounds better. But if you're looking for pure performance track, all that kind of stuff, like throttle, like torque out of the corners is, is like, I mean, we're talking, you know, tenths if not seconds faster on a track, I think, I, I, I personally think. With me, for what I, the way I drive on track, I think that's a huge help. So, we'll see how it relates once we get out there and do some track times, but well, only time will tell on that. So yeah, this is the first full day of, you know, <coughs> ownership, figuring out what to do with the car. It's going to be hard to top that, uh, um, the dyno test yesterday. So you can just literally shift as fast as you can. You're not going to be, you know, the old days of uh, called power shifting, where it's like keep the gas to the ground, just kind of throw it in. Shifts so nice like that, and it's again, it's one more step towards of automatic. Maybe I mean, I love shifting and hitting the clutch and stuff, but there's so many things that this is doing. Like before, it's like you're modulating throttle, you know, downshifting. I always like to. Curious what you guys think. Like, is the are the manuals getting too smart? Like having the auto blip and power shift, keeping the gas to the ground. I mean, it's kind of it's cool, but again, I don't know. If you want the raw manual, I think if you're wearing one of those shirts with like the the patterns, you don't like that stuff. You like to do it all yourself. It's like cheating when you're downshifting. It's like the I don't know if I like the love it or hate it. The rev match, like I mean, I may not like it as much because I on all my cars that I have that have that were manual. It's like I always, you always know like where to be in the RPM range, and I think that's part of getting to like learn your car and get a relationship with it for whatever that means. Like you just you, you just know where to put the put. You know, I'm still like going to hit the throttle because I'm so used to doing that, but it's like the car just does it. Like. on the bell line or on ramps you can hit the gas you can be more playful with it like 500 in like five seconds you're going Mach 1000 it's like you know that car is mostly on track and stuff but it's nice to have a car like this a manual you can go out and enjoy the car drive it on the streets yes you can go have fun with the 500 but again everything's just amplified your big power spinning tires at a you know high speeds and this is just the playbook of just, it's just fun like everything about it like love it or hate it I'm a millennial I mean we like this technology this is what we this is what we love to have always the latest and the cool thing is it's like Ford has the ability now to update all these with uh, you know over the air updates and stuff like that which yes might get in the way of some tuning but you know this car is just to me, it's just really growing on me, and it's the first first day, you know, first couple days. No, it doesn't have the crazy power of a 500, but there's just something to be said about this, like where it fits in. Like, really nice car, you can go do some track days with it, but it's just, to me, it's smooth. Like, I've turned my 500 into a track machine, so I think it stiffens it up a lot. You know, you get the the bushings and stuff. I mean, this look at that. Like, the, this is the the parking brake. You literally just it's. You know, you can drift. That's what we should try. Sometime we're going to try the drifting mode. <laughs> but, yeah, and then, like, to turn it off, all you got to do is just hit it down. 
Have you ever seen anything like that? It's, no, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it'll be more neat once we can try it. The only problem is, look at our parking lot. It's like all brand new. I mean, we have just striped and stuff today, so. The pavement gods are like, Chuck, please don't ruin your new parking lot. Then there's Chuck wanting to do the new drift, you know. We'll see. Let us know if you think we should test this out. <laughs> Make some new fresh marks on this place. But hey. Yeah, let's, uh, we'll see what we got in store today. And I think the next episode, you'll be able to see the other things that we do this thing. But thanks for tuning into our vlogs. If you've stayed this long, we appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this content kind of behind the scenes of what we do here on a daily basis. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next episode.